Hey folks, Carl here, and we are building a diorama. Okay folks, so we are building a diorama and here is our base, just a box standard basic picture frame. This is A5 in size we're doing quite a small one this time the reason being i'm going to turn that upside down because of the reflection the reason being we are building the diorama for this very little 135th scale ford model t ambulance of course we are building this for emodels.co.uk however some of the videos are now up on my channel as well so if you've not watched them yet go along uh watch the videos it's a lovely little build so yeah we are building the diorama for this and the diorama we are going to be building is going to be a basic little he says basic basic little cobblestone street now how are we doing this so we are firstly going to get this out of the way so we don't damage it because i am pretty prone to damaging things and breaking things off now. so first and foremost we're going to need to lay out how we want to build this cobblestone street so I've already marked up on here how we're going to do it. I don't know if the reflection is going to be too much to see that on this white background. But you can see I have lined out where our cobblestone street is going to be. So this part here and up here is going to be the road. This part here is going to be either a bit of wasteland or some grassland or something like that. Or well, could even do a paved street. We're not sure yet. So that is going to be the layout. So I can now flip that around. Put this back in of course we are going to need to break this off of here because we don't want that on there anymore it's the best way to do that let's have a look do that off. Pull that out. all right so that will just pull off like so we'll get that back in there pin it down and we don't need to go back into there and we're going to literally just rip that off of there so and uh, do I need to save that for something else? Probably not. We'll put it to one side for now. Decide whether we need to keep it for something else. So how are we doing this cobblestone street? There are many ways to do it. We can use bits of um, foam and put impressions in there. We can cut all the bits of foam up. If you give me a second. Here we go. Here's my first attempt at this diorama. So, yes, you can use foam that uh, preform stuff and you can push impressions into the foam. Let me turn that over, stop that foam in reflection. Uh, and stamp impressions into it. You can use things like a pencil with a rubber on the end and you can sharpen the metal and you can push it in and do things like that. You can use platter of Paris and then you can uh, pour it and then you can cut it the cobblestones into it you can use bits of like this stuff cut it into small little chunks and uh, put it as little individual cobblestones and that was my first attempt i used some um, wall filler and i used some stuff like this but it was already small and flat so i just cut it into shape and this is the result we got so it's a cobblestone street there's the path that was made out of uh wall filler and the curb stones were wall filler and the cobblestones were just bits of like i say this stuff cut into small squares now i don't like the look of this it's it's hmm, way out of scale shall we say the cobbles are absolutely huge and i can show you this by putting this uh, this onto there now look at the size of those cobblestones they are immense yeah, so that was the first attempt. It's, I may still use it for something. I'm not sure yet. I'm not going to throw it away or pull it all off. We shall keep it there for a while. So other options. Of course, you can cast 135th scale uh, cobblestones. And that is how we are going to be doing this diorama. We'll put that I was looking for somewhere to put it, but everywhere's full. Now, I had a look around on uh, 
the interwebs for silicon molds for uh, 135th scale cobblestones and bits and pieces. Couldn't really find anything. Uh, so I thought, oh, I'll go on YouTube. There's bound to be some uh, some videos somewhere of someone molding and casting 135th scale. And I wasn't disappointed. So I ended up going to, let me get this little bag out. I'll show you the little bag that they came in. It's called a Diorama Debris. And it's basically a silicon rubber mold. Now we bought four, they're not very expensive, to buy. So we bought four little molds. I'm going to get them out now to show you. So we bought all 135th scale. We bought a cobblestone mold. So you get lots in there. <laughs> I tried counting. There's a lot in there. You get... I think it's something like 40 or something like that. Maybe maybe a bit more than that. It doesn't actually tell you how many are inside the one mold. But I'm not, I'm not going to count them, but it's quite a lot. So we got that one. That is for the cobblestones themselves. Then we got this one. Looks very similar, but it's actually the edging bricks for a cobblestone road. They are the same width, but they are thinner. So they will go around the edge of the curb stones and the cobblestones, yeah? So we got those, and we also got a mold for the curb stones. Again, all 135th scale, so we've got straight parts, which are slightly different lengths, and then we've got a curb part, and then we've got uh, these cornerstone pieces in there as well. So yeah, we got those as well. And then lastly, we got manhole cover and surround mold now this is the one i had the most difficulty with not this part the actual manhole cover itself but this part was very difficult to cast well it wasn't difficult to cast it was difficult to get it out of the silicon mold but we managed to get it eventually so i'm going to show you how we cast these it's very very simple it's just some plaster of paris some water and a little bit of color so we're going to head on over to the dirty bench over there where my spray booth and 3d printer are and we are going to cast some cobblestones we're not going to do these i've already cast those i'll show you them after uh we're just going to cast some more edging stones and some more cobblestones so talk to you in a moment Okay, folks, we are at the grubby table, as you can see. So we are going to be casting very shortly. So the things you're going to need to do this, obviously you are going to need some plaster of Paris, which we have in this pot here. You are going to need some water, some water here that has some uh, washing up liquid in it. You can see the molds are already in there soaking away. Um, a little something to work on. I've got a little turntable here because it's nice and easy to, to shake it and tap it. Um, just so that the uh, once we've mixed our plaster of Paris with some water, it actually gets into all the crooks and nannies of the mould itself. A little bit of tissue paper down here for putting the moulds on for when we fill them because this gets very messy very quick. A couple of pots, one for measuring out our plaster of Paris and uh, one to mix in we also have a little spoon for getting the plaster of paris out of the tub a scraper you'll see the reason for the scraper surely a little syringe just for measuring out our water just so we get the correct ratios of water to plaster of paris that's in uh, one milliliter increments right there and a set of scales for measuring out our plaster of Paris and what else have we got here plenty of tissue paper because this is going to get very messy like I say very quick so we are going to start by measuring out we will get this out of the way for now 
where can we put it? There we'll do. So, first things first, we are going to measure out some plaster first. So we are filling two moulds here. So I'm going to want about 20 grams of plaster of Paris. So we'll put that on there. We'll reset our scales. If it'll work. Some cheap pair of scales for measuring out on. So we are trying to get this to just go back to zero. There we go. So we're going to want about 20, 20 grams of plaster. 12, 17, way too much. <laughs> Twenty-two. You have to be quite accurate with this, otherwise it doesn't. Uh, Twenty-one. That'll be fine. So Twenty-one mils. Twenty-one grams of plaster of Paris. We'll get that sealed back up. And we're going to want twenty-one mils of water. Now it says to mix it two to one. Two parts of plaster to one part water. I've tried that several times, and it never really works for me, the plaster starts to set way too quick. So I'm gonna get 20 mils of water. This water's gonna need changing soon, it's getting kind of filthy. So, there's 10, another 10. Well, 11 actually, because we've got 21. Mills. So, there we go. So that's 20 mils of water. Okay, so, get that out of the way. Now, we will bring this back in. Ready to put our moulds on. So what we're going to do is, we're going to very gently get this plaster of Paris into this water. So very little bit, a little bit at a time. Don't put it all in at once. You've got to give it time to soak into the water. A little bit in, a bit more, a little bit at a time. You can see it powder soaks up the water. Just put it in a little bit at a time. Leave the water. Leave the water to soak into it. Like so, and it will all go. Last little bit. There we go. I'm just going to give it a bit of a, a little bit of a shake, just to get it going a bit more. There we go, and we're going to drop some colour in there. Just a little bit of black. There we go. I'm just going to put that to one side. Leave it there for a minute. Just give us enough time to get our moulds out of the soapy water. Just to get the water out of them. I'll say this way, I'm saying it gets messy quite quick. I'm just giving them a bit of a bang down to get the water out of the, the main parts of the water out of those. So. Those are ready for our plaster. We'll get our brush plaster mix, and we're just going to mix it up. This way, you have to be reasonably quick. Get that mixed up. You can see it's quite runny still. There we go, it's going a bit grey now, so. That like that, I'll brush into the water for cleaning, and then we are literally just going to pour it onto the molds before it starts to dry too much, like so. Let's look to this mold, like so. Get a bit more of this out here, spread, spread it around a bit. I would like to. I would have liked it a little bit more watery, watery than that. And now, like I say, we're just going to give this a good old shake. Get it spread around over the top of the mold. 
spread it out. Same on this one. Just like that, just so it can move around the top of the mould. Like I say, it gets messy quick and then we're going to just continue giving it a bit of a shake. I do have an electric motor coming that vibrates and we are going to be making a vibrating desk so this bit is a little bit easier. It's a little bit noisy. see some of the air bubbles here. Well, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. I can see them coming out. There we go. Put it around a bit more. Continue tapping it. be enough. I'm just going to clean my hands. We're going to leave that alone for about two or three minutes and then we are going to scrape the excess off the top of it. So we will be back in a minute. I'm going to clean my pots and everything up and we'll be back in a minute. Talk to you in a moment. All right, folks, so they have been just sitting there for about two or three minutes. And we are literally now just going to get our scraper and we're just going to literally very gently scrape the excess away, like so. You see those haven't filled quite right, so we're just going to very gently caress it into the holes. Just like so. There we go. Access off this way. Oh. And now we are literally just going to leave that be for about half an hour and then come back to it and get the cobblestones out of the moulds. So. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to very gently lift them up out of the access and just pop them down on there, I think. We can get rid of this tissue then, clean up a little bit while we're waiting for this lot to dry. So, plant that one down there. There we go. We can throw that away. So, we shall talk to you in about 20 minutes when those are dry. See you in a moment. Okay folks, so these have now been sitting here for probably half an hour, maybe even 40 minutes. I went off and I did some other bits and pieces. So as you can see, they are, all the stuff that's on the edges is just crumbling away. may very well still feel a little bit wet but they should be dry enough to peel out of the mold so we're just getting rid of all this stuff on the sides first and then we've got a little pot to put them all in so we're going to take the cobblestones out first and all you do is you just flip it up and you just pretty much bend the silicon and they've literally just fall out. And once we've got them all out, 
I'll show you what they look like. So just push the mold and they should literally, like I say, just pop out. Now these are the cobblestones, like I've said. So here we go. Not a reasonable amount of cobblestones there and just so you can see what they actually look like individually. We'll try zooming in, see if we can get this camera to focus, but it may not be brilliant this close up. So there you go, you can see got the texture of a cobblestone. Obviously the bottom section, excuse my monkey fingers, the bottom is flat it's felt when you lay it down. And there we have one 135th cobblestone. Of course we've got quite a few out of that one mould. So if you give me one second, we'll zoom out. We'll put these to one side. And if you give me one moment. Okay, so here is some we made earlier with different colours. Different colour um, paints and pigments and all sorts of stuff we've used. Some we've left plain white. So we'll get these added to this pot. Some nice dark ones to go in there. A bit of a mix up. There we go. So we have got quite a few oh, cobblestones now ready for our road. So I've been making these over the last few weeks. So next we will get out these uh, etching stones. Exactly the same process. Empty pot, and again, just flip the mold over and just start pushing on the back of the mold. And out they come. So, we're missing and getting them all over the place. So, again, you get quite a few out of the one mold. However, I am tempted to buy extra molds to try and save a bit of time. So you can do a couple at once, because even though you get quite a few, you can imagine one road is going to take up quite a few cobblestones. I doubt very much we would have enough there to do that one road. We shall see. We're going to need to make some more. It only takes about 45 minutes to make a couple of uh, batches. So again, there is the edging stone. We'll zoom in. Reach over there a second. Zoom in so you can take a look. There you go. And you can see the texture on that cobblestone. Cobblestone, sorry, edging stone. And just to give you a comparison to what the size is like, it's almost like half a cobblestone. So, there we go. That is the casting part of the cobblestones we're making. And again, we've already made quite a few, all different colors. Add those to the pile and we'll mix up. And there we go, we have a pile of edging stones. So, like I said, showed you, I showed you this mold and the other mold. And again, we've got them here. So. And these are pretty much are just curbstones. We'll zoom in again. Exactly the same, just a length of curbstone. We've got the flat edge, we're laying it down, and then we've got that texture. And they come in all different sizes. You even get like these corners, and you get round ones for doing uh, corners. And they come in all different lengths. You can see that one is slightly smaller than that one. And then, of course, you get the... I've forgotten what it's called now. This thing. The uh, manhole cover. So that is the, the surround for the manhole cover. Again, superb detail. Comes out really, really well. And there's the actual manhole cover that goes on to that surround. And it is a perfect fit. So there you go.
So, and again, I've gone and made some extra ones in here. These take a little bit longer to dry because this part is very delicate to get out. You've got to take your time. You've got to give it plenty of time to dry so it's rock solid. So we're going to be leaving that one be for quite, probably till tomorrow. And then we'll try and get it out of mold. So I'm going to get this all cleaned up. We'll zoom out a bit. So we have our three pots. We've got our curbs and our manhole cover, edging stones and cobblestones. So I'm going to finish getting all this tidied up and we'll head over back to the other bench. So talk to you in a moment. Okay, folks. So as you can see, we are back on the uh, clean bench. And there's one extra thing here that we're going to be adding to this diorama. And that is a telegram pole. Uh, there's the main pole itself already put together. This is taken from a mini art set, which I have right here. It's called telegraph poles. But I think this was mainly back when I'm thinking of doing this, it was probably telegrams for the most part. So we've gone for this one. Or is it this one? It's either that one or that one. All we're putting on is the main beams at the top here, which are here. They're quite delicate, so I'm not going to manhandle them too much. And they, of course, will just be stuck onto there like so. And even though these things look absolutely huge, a little bit of research shows you they were actually quite, uh, quite tall. So this is going to be sitting probably on the corner here, the corner of the street, somewhere probably there like that, like so, probably, we shall see, we shall see. So everything is now prepped and ready. We are going to call this episode here. So this is part one. When we come back, we will start the second part of laying all the cobblestones down and deciding where we're going from there. So that is us. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Be good, be safe. And of course, most importantly, keep making models and we shall see you next time. Ta-ta.